Yellowstone supervolcano news, a mountain range disappeared into the enormous magma chamber. An entire mountain range collapsed into the magma chamber of the Yellowstone supervolcano. This is what a leading scientist told a documentary on Smithsonian. The Yellowstone supervolcano has been a source of apocalyptic fascination for years, and it's easy to see why. Yellowstone is one of the world's over 21 supervolcanoes, each at least seven times bigger than Mount Tambora, which had the biggest volcanic eruption in recorded history. And Yellowstone is believed to be the largest of them all. It's erupted three times in the previous two uh, million years, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and the last one was 640,000 years ago. These were all super eruptions, and uh, we've had a 70,000 year ago lava eruption and another 80 eruptions since then. The last eruption was believed to have been a thousand times bigger than the devastating Mount St. Helens eruption of 1980. Yellowstone's last eruption created a depression known as a caldera. This is the eruption of the super eruption of 640,000 years ago. The caldera is about 55 kilometers by 80 kilometers wide. The next eruption is predicted, predicted to cause a massive de 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 devastation. A 2014 paper in Geochemistry, Geophysics, Geosystems found that the volcano is capable of burying a number of U.S. states, including Idaho and Colorado, in three feet of volcanic ash. With eruptions occurring at intervals of roughly 660,000 years, some geologists have argued that Yellowstone is overdue an eruption. The 2015 Smithsonian Channel documentary Yellowstone Supervolcano explored the impacts of the last eruption and risks posed by future super eruptions. Right beneath the caldera of the last eruption sits the magma chamber. It's fed by a plume of magma stretching some 465 miles. Though it's mostly solid rock, it, it has a potential to liquefy. I highly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. Let's remember that super volcanoes don't act like regular volcanoes because of the fact that their magma chamber is so huge, the roof of the magma chamber can uh, somehow crack in uh, a various uh, uh, earthquakes. We know that there's also a lake over part of the magma chamber. The roof of the magma chamber, here's the picture of the lake on the right hand side image, and it sits over the caldera, and even waves, a strong breeze making waves over that uh, surface of the lake could cause earthquakes over the magma chamber. Now, um, the uh, documentary says that the magma is rising through the plume into the magma chamber at a rate, a rate of a whopping two inches every year. The scientists told the documentary that this restless Yellowstone caldera is truly living, breathing, and every once in a while it burps. Concern starts to arise when the plume begins to liquefy and moves towards uh, upwards at a, a faster rate. Geologist Jake Lowenstern told the documentary, natural systems can throw us a love of... Uh, Curve balls, a lot of things can happen when we're not really ready for them. Lowenstern searched for a pattern in the three prior eruptions, and he says, in two of the really large eruptions at Yellowstone, so much material comes out, entire mountain ranges end up falling into the ground and essentially disappearing. Can you imagine? The documentary narrator John Beach added that a 50-mile stretch of mountains simply disappeared by collapsing into the magma chamber. The last eruption ejected approximately 1,000 cubic kilometers of rock, dust, and volcanic ash into the atmosphere. And geologist John Westgate tracked ash from previous eruptions. He said it covered much of the United States. It occurs right out of the Pacific Ocean. It's even found in the Gulf of Mexico, this volcanic ash. At the time, he and his team were working on a site in northeast Montana the ash was over 7 meters thick in places, that's over 21 feet. 21 feet of ash from Yellowstone. When Mount St. Helens erupted 
as she landed in 11 states and up into Canada, the documentary's narrator said that's nothing compared to previous Yellowstone eruptions. We know that we have mountains of ash created by the last Yellowstone eruption. He said in, in magnitude and volume, each one was far greater than Mount St. Helens. So if a super eruption was to occur, the warning signs would be obviously obvious. Lowenstern told Vox earlier this year, we'd likely first see intense seismic activity across the entire park. Weeks and months would likely pass for the earthquakes to fracture the rocks above the magma, allowing for an eruption. Lowenstern stressed the worst case scenario are likely are unlikely, though things can change as seen with previous super eruptions. He said, even if Yellowstone did erupt again, you probably would not get the worst case scenario. What's much, much more common are small eruptions. That's a point that often gets ignored in the press, he said. The United States Geological Survey notes that there is no sign of an imminent eruption. The odds of an eruption in any given year are just 0.00014%. There's also no guarantee that Yellowstone eruption erupts on a regular cycle. Lawrence said, the Earth will see super eruptions in the future, but will they come in Yellowstone? That's not a sure thing. They can come from some other uh, supervolcano. Uh, now, this is by Charlie Pitt Talk on Express UK. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support.